Hi guys, welcome to this 11th tutorial in this series of Programming Peak Microcontroller with Flow Code for Absolute Beginners. In this tutorial, we're gonna learn the RS-232 serial communication with Flow Code. A serial port interface can be used for serial communication where data is sent or received one bit at a time between a personal computer and various devices supporting this type of protocol. This can be, let's say you want to communicate from your PC to your microcontroller or from a microcontroller to another microcontroller or even from a microcontroller with other electronic devices like a GSM modem. Let's say your application requires you to use a GSM modem most of these GSM modem communicate with serial, with RS-232 communication. Let's say you are building a GPS application. Most of G GPS applications use this serial communication protocol. While other interfaces like Ethernet and USB all send data as a serial stream, the term serial port usually identifies hardware more or less compliant to the RS-232 communication protocol. These are some few communication cables that we are used to. This is a USB cable, this is an Ethernet cable, and this is the RS-232 cable that we're going to use in this tutorial. The RS-232 serial communication is still widely used in industrial applications and in many electronic devices like modems, but it is being replaced by the USB. Let's go to flow code and see how we can use the RS-232 communication. The Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter Controller is the key component of the serial communications between a device and a PC or between devices. Most of all microcontrollers nowadays have an internal Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter at the specific pins of the microcontrollers but this feature can also be implemented at any pin with a software in most of the compilers. Let's say for example the PIC 18F2220 has got one WART module at pin RC7 which is used for REC it used to receive and the pin RC6 which is used to transmit. This serial communication only requires two wires, one to send and one to receive and the common ground wire. So if you want to communicate serially with this peak then you can use this only these two pins to send data from one microcontroller to another or from one microcontroller to another device like a GSM modem or even a PC. But let's say if the pin RC7 and pin RC6 have been used with something else, then you can, instead of using the hardware, the built-in WART, then you can use any pin with the software WART which is available in most of the compilers, including flow code. But it's always recommended to use the hardware WART for serial communication if it's available, as they have dedicated buffers that allow for data to be sent and received while you are processing other portions of your program. To insert an RS-232 component under the comms category click on rs232 and the component will be inserted on the panel this is the rs232 component in flow code it's got some advanced features for simulation you can send characters and you can see the character received as if you were communicating between two devices. Click on X, X properties 
to edit the component properties here you can set the board rate the default it set is at 9600 you can choose a different board rate depending on your applications because this peak microcontroller the 18f2220 has got only one wart module that's why you can see the rest of modules are disabled if for some reasons you don't want to use the hardware the built-in wart module then you can click on software then you'll be free to use any pin but if you use the internal hardware then you don't need to select the pin that you're gonna use because flow code knows exactly which pins are connected to the wart one in this section you can set the data bit with flow code if the hardware wart is selected then you are restricted to only 8 bit but if you select the software then you can select between 7 or 8 the char receive type define the value for the time out return value if you select the byte the legacy byte this will set the invalid return time out value to 255 this allows data value between 0 to 254 in 8 bit mode to be used but if you select the int which is extended data it sets the invalid return time out value to 512 this allows acceptable data values between 0 to 255 in 8-bit mode or 0 to 511 in 9-bit mode. The RX timeout unit configure the receive micro timeout structure as the number of iterations if you select the legacy or as an actual time to wait for data if you select the, the millisecond. The echo mode allows any incoming data to be echoed straight back to the sender. In this demonstration, we're gonna use the default board rate and we're gonna use the hardware word. So I'm just gonna leave the default values as they are. Click OK. If I click on connections, you can see it says this component is no external connections because you don't need to specify any pins if you use the hardware Word. but if i used the software then this setting is going to become enabled then you can choose the pin that you're going to use for for receive let's say i want to receive on pin on port c pin 7 and the transmitter let's say i want to use this port c 6 so here you can basically set your own your own pit for for communication especially if you are using a peak which does not have a built-in wart or if your built-in wart there is already something connected to it click done let's set our txrx to wart one again okay to use the rs232 it's very easy it's got only some few micros if you click to the component micro and select the RS232, we've got the send RS23 char. This micro is used to send a char data to the RS232 connection. It takes only one parameter, which is going to be the char value to, to be sent. Let's say if I want to send the data A, then you can just open single quote A, click OK. If I run my simulation, you can see the character A is sent to the RS232 connection. The other micro is send RS232 string. If you want to send a string of characters to the RS23 connection, you can use a string variable if you, you had one in your program, or you can just write directly Let's say if I want to send student companion, close the quotations. Okay, let me just delete these characters, click on clear. Okay, I'll have to run first. Clear, then if I run, you can see the strings student companion 
sent to the RS232. The next micro is the receive RS232 char. This micro receives the next character of data from the RS232 connection. The end timeout specifies how long to wait for a character to be received. This micro is going to return the value of the invalid return if there was no character received within that specified time. You could say, for example, can wait 50. Then if I receive something, then I'll have to store it in a variable. It has to be an int variable. So I can create new, can select an int variable. Let me name it return. Okay, use it. So if I receive something, I'm going to store it in the variable return. Okay. The next and the last micro is the receive RS232 string. This micro receives a string of characters from the RS232 connection. The timeout specifies how long to wait for the character to be received. The num byte specifies the length of the characters expected to receive. And the return value is going to be the string that is going to store the data that we're going to receive. Let me create a string variable. Add new. Let me call it string. It's going to be string. Default size is 20. Then I can say I'm expecting 20 characters. Click OK. OK. I left to use a string values, not a, an integer. String. OK. So if I run this program, there was something sent to the RS23 connection. Then my program is going to receive it. This is basically how we can use the RS232 serial communication with flow code. It's very easy and straightforward. Let us build a small, simple project to receive something from the RS232 connection. And once it receives it, it's going to echo it back to the sender. And once it receives, it's going to display it to the LCD display as well. I'm going to connect my LCD to port B. So I'm going to leave these default connections. Click done. The first thing I'm going to need is the while one loop because I want my program to run continuously. Then the first micro to use is the receive character. So I'm going to keep receiving if there's something to receive. The time out, let's use 50. And if I receive something, I'm going to store it in the variable return. OK. And I'm going to need a decision so that I can only display a valid data received. So if return is less than 255, because if I receive 255, it means I did not receive anything. Because the invalid return is 255, or if there is some error or anything, then I'm going to receive 255. For valid data, it has to be below 255. Click OK. So if I receive something, then I'm going to display whatever I received. Print. I'm going to display it. And once I display it, then I'm going to send it back to the sender. Let's say send character. And what I'm going to send, I'm going to send whatever I received. Let me run this project and see. Run. You can see there is nothing displayed on the LCD screen because I haven't received anything to simulate like you are sending something to the RS232 component. You click to this plus 
and you can enter something you want to send. Let's say I want to send B. Click OK. It's going to be in the queue. Then you can see it sent and it received back because it was a code back and it displayed on the LCD. Let's say I want to send hello. Click OK. Then it's going to send hello but one character at a time. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to receive more tutorials. Thank you.